Hey guys, welcome to Techno News. This is episode 40 for the 15th of May. Remember to hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment or any more for engagement, and remember to follow me on my socials, X and TikTok, at Technofish Live, and you can catch me live from around 10 o'clock p.m. here on YouTube Gaming if you want to discuss this or any of my other videos, any of my ghost reactions or anything like that. Uh, we are pushing for monetization still, so if you wouldn't mind letting this play all the way through and maybe catch up on another one or two of my videos i'd be very grateful for that thank you right let's go into the news shall we we'll start off there's been a lot of stuff going on in valorant lately with the vct closing up and getting ready for the masters in shanghai the teams that won their individual regions were 100 thieves prx fanatic which made some sort of miraculous comeback as always and Edward Gaiman, they all get buys in the next round. The opening matches are scheduled from the 23rd. Um, we've got G2 v T1, which should be a good game. Heretics against DRG, which a lot of people are seeing as a buy for the Heretics. Uh, similarly with the FPX foot match, um, a lot of people are seeing the foot have got a free buy there as well. Um, I'd like to say that'd be more of a competition. And then we've got Genji versus Leviathan. Obviously the winners of that go around to play the guys who got automatic spots due to winning the groups. There's been leak of a new bundle, which looks very Moana inspired, the Holomoku. I don't know if I'm saying that right. No real details on effects or anything other than there's a variant, which is the the C one, which I'm guessing is the shiny, shimmery affected ones. Uh, there's going to be a Frenzy, a Bulldog, Outlaw, Vandal, and the Melee, which is called the Kamana. And there's a Buddy and a card included with that. There's also rumours of another Night Market being imminent. Um, seems a bit quick, but yeah, it may come through. I don't know what you're expecting or what you're hoping for in that in the comments. Other than Valorant, there just seems to be a lot more doom and gloom going around. Um, on the back of the Microsoft buying out Bethesda and things like that, it all seems to be a bit gloomy at the minute. They're closing another four studios, um, one of which is Arcane Austin, who I believe were responsible for Redfall. Um, the game was pretty much and horrendous flop but should that justify shutting the studio down completely as they have had a lot of success in the past with the likes of Prey and Dishonored and Deathloop and things like that um, yeah it's, it's I don't know it seems a bit strange uh, similarly the closing down Tango games which is working on Hi-Fi Rush and things like that Evil Within, Ghostwire Tokyo all big games um, so I'm not entirely sure what the aim was in buying the studios just to close them all down. It's it's a bit of a harsh climate to be involved in at the minute in the gaming industry. But let us know what you guys think. Um, can you think of any other reasons why they would be doing stuff like that? And again, Square Enix announced the profits were down significantly. There is imminent the offs around the corner there as well from what I gather um, but they have announced a plan to reboot the company and be more aggressively multi-platform um, I think a lot of the issues have stemmed because they've been quite PlayStation focused all the Final Fantasy 7 remakes and things like that were all exclusive to the PlayStation and as of a lot of the other games in the past from what I recall um, yeah it's like I said it's a bit of a harsh industry at the minute but they reckon they're going to be focusing and putting out more multi-platform stuff, focusing more on Nintendo and Xbox and PC, uh, which is a good move for them in the end. Um, a lot of the employees will be moved to different teams as well. Um, they're not just sort of all getting the sack as such from what I gather with these guys. They are actually taking care of them, but we'll see what happens with that. I don't know if it's... Brighton news and offer in the wake of Warner Brothers losing 200 million on the likes of Suicide Squad and stuff like that. They've relinquished control of the Adult Swim banner and give the reins back to the devs. Obviously there were a team who made a load of indie games and things like that that were actually quite successful in their own rights. Uh, they've given them back 
control of that uh, they have been removed from steam and stuff but I'm, I'm assuming all that will get relinquished as well um but it'll be interesting to see what comes of that hopefully they can come out some more decent little gems and it looks like sony added again um appeared that the pc port of ghost of tsushima which is due out will indeed need you to create a sony psn account uh, like the hell divers debacle the other week it has been delisted from steam in over 170 countries where you can't actually get a sony playstation account people are being refunded and things like that and at least this time it won't be forced on people sort of on the fly like a couple of months if after release but still there's a lot of people who won't be able to play the game now because of that you either need a playstation to create the account or as i said there's like 170 countries where you just can't get an account at the minute so it'll be interesting to see if they find a workaround for that or if there's any other way of doing so because they're going to be losing a lot of people because of that um here i've reportedly still considering finding new ways of putting adverts into games obviously the likes of the fc and the madden and stuff They've got like the Sky Sports type banners popping up and things like that, which is not that intrusive, but still there. Um, but they're trying to find ways of including adverts in most of the games. How they'll, they'll get stuff in the, the likes of Dragon Age or whatever. I don't know. Unless there's a, an NPC with a shop with a bloody banner over the top of the front of it. Or something saying buy this on offer or some bullshit i don't know but i don't know there's ways and means like i said it's sort of acceptable in to a certain extent and the likes of what was fifa and madden and stuff like that but in the likes of battlefield and like i said dragon age things like that do we really need advertising i don't know and speaking of advertising there was one that caught me eye on youtube recently um the mobile game clash of clans clash of clans is including erling Haaland somehow why or how this came about is pretty much beyond me it's quite comical in a way but what the fuck guys i don't know all a bit peculiar but yeah um that's it for the news this week guys hope you enjoyed it hope it was you found it informative let us know if any of your thoughts on any of the stories I've covered or if I can do things differently or better or just general feedback. If you want to discuss this, please pop by my live streams. We can have a chat on the night from around 10 o'clock p.m. UK. And I am so grateful to each and every one of you. It means a lot, all the support I've been getting recently. Um, the channel has took off quite a bit and we're looking to push for partners so any support in doing so would be very much appreciated like i said even if you just watch any of me other quick videos or whatever just try and bump me view and i was up i'd be very grateful for that in the meantime guys thanks for watching and i'll catch you in the next one cheers